Today we wanted to talk a little bit about something you can do while you're in that lull of no hunting, which is a very unfortunate time of year for a lot of us. Uh, today we are going to be talking about something we can do during that time frame. A lot of us, myself included, just happened to fill our freezers up just a short time ago, back in October, November, December. A lot of people fill up their freezers and if you guys are anything like me, you find yourself with a surplus of leftover stuff in the freezer from the prior year. So today I pulled out an old elk roast that's from a few years back and I'm going to show you a little recipe of how I like to dispose, for lack of a better term, how I like to dispose of perhaps something a little bit older, maybe something got a little freezer burned, maybe something that's since it wasn't a prime cut so to speak, it's something that you can use to uh, use that meat up in a good way. Today we're going to be working on a recipe that I've become very fond of and I like to call it venison butternut curry. Uh, it's used with pretty much any red meat. Um, I use elk and deer, I've used antelope. Uh, I, I don't see any red meat you couldn't use really for this. And then this is just a little butternut squash that I grew in my garden last season. So venison butternut curry. Typically what I start out with is a couple pounds of venison. Like I said before, it doesn't matter if it's deer, elk, antelope, whatever the case. I like to double wrap my venison. Uh, it tends to last better in the freezer that, that way. And I also, particularly for this recipe, I like to cut it up when it's still fairly frozen. So this, this is thawed somewhat. It's still, it's still quite firm, as you can see. I like to do it while the meat is still fairly firm from being frozen mainly because it helps me cut it up nicely into a little cube size, which is what I like to do. So I just start with a frozen piece, slice it like that, and I just keep going like this. I like to keep them about three quarters to an inch thick, and you can just cut up your entire roast just like that. And then as you'll see, once we get them cut like this, we then slice it up into little cubes. So I just slice it down the middle and then it up like this. No particular rhyme or reason, no particular size it needs to be, but that's what we do. We cut them up into little pieces like that and then I just throw them into a little bowl that I keep piling it onto. So we chop up our meat into these nice little sizes and we can just throw it into the bowl here as we get them stacked up. So now that we've got our meat cut up, we're going to add our seasoning, which is going to consist of quite a pile of ingredients. That's what makes it taste good. So we're gonna start. I like to use a little bit of red wine. You can also use vinegar. I sometimes use a little bit of both. Um, so a little bit of red wine. I also like to use a little bit of soy sauce as well. I like to get a little bit of liquid, not too much, but I like a little bit of liquid in the meat to kind of help uh, soak in and it allows all the dry ingredients to stick to the meat and I just kind of toss it up around make sure everything's got a nice good coating on it then we're going to do our dry ingredients um, I like to use salt this is just some Himalayan salt most of this stuff is going to be a fairly equal amount um, probably a teaspoon or a tablespoon or so of each so I like to do a little bit of salt black pepper again this is there's no science to this. Everybody's no, everybody knows how to do this, right? A little bit of paprika as well. Then ground coriander. And then the magic stuff, curry. You can use red curry powder or yellow curry powder. I've done this with both. It's good either way. So this is yellow curry powder. A little bit of oregano flakes. And last... A little bit of cumin. Now you can use cumin if you want. Some people like it, some people don't. I've used it with and without. I like a little bit, not too much. Add into our, rest, our uh, ingredients there. And then we shake all this stuff up so we get a nice uniform mix of everything. And once we do, we just start adding it to our meat gently. Shake it over the top, get a little bit on everything. Then I roll it, cover the rest kind of get a nice even coating of everything on all the meat. And once we have everything coated like that, 
it'll be ready to go into the fridge. I like to let it sit like this for, I usually do it overnight or I'll do it in the morning before I go to work and then when I come home, it's ready to cook. You can do it however you want, but typically I like to let it sit for quite some time. Gets a nice uniform marinade going on there. So as you can see, everything's nicely coated, got seasoned on everything little bit of liquid to help soak into everything. So there you go. So like this, like I say, usually I throw this in the fridge for, you know, five to 10 hours overnight or something like that, but uh, you can do it however you want. All right, this dish does take a nice selection of vegetables, which is a healthy thing, obviously, and adds to the flavor of this recipe. However, a lot of these vegetables are not available this time of year. Uh, unless you get them from the grocery store, obviously. I like to use stuff out of the garden. Um, I do bottle tomatoes during the summertime and I like to use those for this recipe because it does use some tomatoes and it's nice to have that fresh uh, garden stuff. So today we're gonna use stuff straight out of the store. So we're gonna start with some onions. Um, you can use white, yellow. I like to do a little mixture of white and uh, red onions, or excuse me, yellow and red onions. You can do it however you want. Uh, chop up your onions however you usually chop up onions. I like to chop them up into small uh, um, small sizes so that I can use them in the uh, in the pot, get them nice and soft. And then we're gonna do one red one just for good measure. I can't tell if I'm crying because hunting season's over or if it's these onions. We're gonna add half of our red onion to this mix and then the other half we're gonna save for the end so they stay nice and pretty colors. Next, we're gonna do some garlic. I like to use ridiculous amounts of garlic. I assume most people are like that because garlic's good. So throw in some garlic. I'm using three big cloves. You can do whatever you want. I would definitely recommend more garlic than you think is necessary. The rest of the vegetables we're gonna put in after we've got the meat browned in the pan. So for now, we're gonna to go to that. I like to use bacon grease. You can use oil, you can use whatever you want, but we're gonna want a fairly good amount of oil in the bottom of our pan uh, to brown the onions, and then we're gonna add the meat to it. But before we do that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pan. I like to use a pressure cooker because I'm lazy and I like things to go fast. So I use a pressure cooker for this recipe. If you want, you can do it in a slow cooker, you can do it in an Instapot, you can use whatever you want, or if you wanna take your time, you could just do it in a, in a frying pan or something like that. But I'm gonna show you how to do it in the pressure cooker. So come on over here and I'll show you how that goes. All right, so once we've got our onions basically sweated here, they're starting to turn a little translucent and we are ready to add our meat. I like to get the pan real hot so we get a nice good brown sear on the meat when we throw it in there. And then we're going to dump in all that tasty juice from our marinade. And then we're gonna just on high heat, we're gonna stir this around and get all of our meat nice and brown. While our meat is browning in the pan, we're gonna chop up the remainder of our vegetables, which is a couple sticks of celery and some tomatoes. Like I said, you can use tomatoes that are canned or you can even use like, you know, tomato paste or something like that if you want. It's up to you. I like to use uh, fresh stuff out of the garden. The celery, I like to just chop up the whole thing pretty fine, just like you're gonna do, like if you're making a stuffing or something like that. Uh, chop it up. I do leaves and all. Maybe I'm crazy. Somebody will probably tell me that that's the wrong way to do it, but ta-da. The tomatoes, you don't really need to chop them very fine because you know how tomatoes are, they're just gonna fall apart anyways. So I just chop them up into fairly large sizes, just big slices. They'll come apart in the pot and just turn into part of a very delicious gravy that you'll enjoy later. All right, so tomatoes, celery, ready to go. We're gonna put this into the pot right after the meat is finished browning. We're gonna cover up the pressure cooker and let it simmer with this stuff in there, but first, we're gonna add one can of either beef broth or chicken broth, whatever you use. I also like to use bone broth that I made from elk bones. You can use whatever you want, but a can of broth basically, throw it in the pot with your veggies, and then you can seal up the pressure cooker and let it simmer for about 45 minutes. So while our meat is cooking in the pressure cooker, we're going to turn our focus to the butternut squash. This little beauty here from the garden. So 
You can use any squash, really. Uh, you can use pumpkin, you can use acorn squash, you can use whatever you want. I like to use butternut. I like the color, I like the taste. So that's what I like to use. For this recipe, I'm probably not gonna need the whole squash. So I'm gonna cut off the top like that. And then we're going to essentially trim it down to about the same size pieces as we did with our meat. So basically just like I did with our meat, I'm gonna cut this squash into little one inch to three quarter inch sections, about like this. And that makes it a lot easier to peel. You can do it however you like. This is how I do it. After our meat's done, after our meat's been in there for about 45 minutes, I'm going to uh, release the pressure on the pressure cooker and then I'm gonna add up my diced squash on top of it. And then we're gonna close it back up for about five minutes is all it takes to get this squash nice and cooked. And oatmeal, sometimes I like to put a little barley in it as well, thicken up the gravy just a little bit and then it will be basically ready to serve at that point. Creamy mashed potatoes, cream cheese, butter, a little bit of milk, salt and pepper. Mm. All right, last thing, while our squash cooks on the stove, we're going to prep our topping, which is basically fresh chopped cilantro and the other half of our red onion. So we're gonna chop the onion up nice and fine into some real small pieces. And then we will dice up our cilantro and that stuff will be served over the top raw like this. We'll just throw it on top of the meat once it's ready. And it'll be ready to go. Last thing, plating the meal. We're gonna start with our creamy mashed potato blend here. We're going to serve a nice little pile of potatoes here in the middle. And then we're going to add our meat mixture. And we'll top it off with our fresh chopped cilantro and our red onions. So there you have it. That is venison butternut curry. Probably one of the best things on the planet to eat. Best way I can think of to get rid of old meat, maybe even freezer burn meat, whatever, it, whatever you want to get rid of. I wouldn't say throw a cat in it, but you probably could. So hope you guys enjoy that recipe. Let us know how it goes for you.